Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Battle Puffs by Next Level. This game plays two to five players, takes roughly about 15 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Battle Puffs, you're going to be playing as Battle Puffs. You're going to get a certain number of these puffs to start the game off with, and cards in your hand. And on your turn, you'll be playing power cards, you'll also be playing attack cards, or if it's not your turn, defense cards. And your objective is to defeat all the other puffs on the field, to be the last puff standing. There's multiple game modes, but we'll talk about the main one here, which is the Battle Royale game mode, in which you're just trying to defeat all the opposing puffs with your puffs remaining to win the game. Pretty simple, let's talk about the setup, and then of course how to play, and finally my review. Setting up the game Battle Puffs is very easy. The first thing you'll do, shuffle the puff deck and the battle deck. Place them down within reach of all players, and then deal out three puffs to each player. Reveal those puffs and place them in front of each player, and check to see any of their effects. Because you'll be drawing seven battle cards. Now if a puff says that you do draw more, you will draw more into your hand. Otherwise it will be those seven and it'll be placed face down in front of you which will be forming your hand. After that you're going to go ahead and check your puffs. Look at your puffs on the very bottom of the card and check to see their star level. The puff that has the highest star level is the puff that will begin the game or player that will begin the game and if there is a tie you'll move on to the next puff in those chosen players to determine whoever has the next highest star value. And then you're ready to go. Pick up those cards into your hand and start type battling puffs. A turn in battle puffs is very simple. Basically what you're going to be doing is you'll be choosing to use any power cards in your hand that you would like as well as choosing to attack one puff. Uh, you can go ahead and choose to use power then attack and then power or attack and power or power and attack. It's really up to you. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to select one of the puffs that you have in the field and then you're going to go ahead and designate that puff to another puff to battle them. So I would be like okay I'm going to send my dev to Puffy, the other puff of my opponent's side of the field. And then I could choose to lay down and attack. Attack cards are generally one value, but sometimes they could be more, like if, if the puff and the attack match, they're two. And then my opponent's objective is going to be to defend. They're gonna look through their hand, hopefully have a defend card, and block the attack. And attacks and defends can go back and forth. So if I have another attack, I can put it down. If the opponent has another defend, they can put it down. And whoever has the higher variety or cumulative amount of cards or total, if you have a battle card that adds up to their puff, uh, will be the player who wins. Defense le leaves the puff alone, and if it's the attacker side that wins, that puff will be removed, discarded, or flipped face down, however you'd like to do it. Uh, there are other powers, of course, in the game that will let you bring your puffs back to life. You're going to have like things like reanimate, but for the most part, that puff will be destroyed. Uh, you can also play power cards before or after your attacks, uh, like shut down, you can play this at any time. When using an attack or power is played, their attack is now shut down and the turn is over. Uh, wow, it's basically a shutdown card or a counter spell card. Or you can play this during an attack and defend, draw two battle cards to aid in the attacking or defending. Um, or at the end of your turn, you, you can, the game is reversed, so the order of the game can be reversed. And so on and so forth. So you'll choose a puff lay down an attack, the defense will play a defend card, and you'll go back and forth until that puff is eliminated, or basically your puff is not able to defeat that puff. Play any power cards you would like, then draw back up to seven cards from the puff deck. If you chose not to do anything on your turn, you could simply discard two and draw two new cards, thusly giving yourself a new different type of hand if you do not like what you have. The play will then pass to the next player in turn order, and they will do the same things as well. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Yes, there's quite a, about a uh, variety of different powers and puff powers, and uh, there's also a, b a bunch of different types of attack and defend cards, which we'll talk about in my review uh, now. Okay, first things first, you, you have to make a little clarification. You cannot put a puff face down when they are destroyed. They have to go to the graveyard, and the reason for that is because uh, puffs can go invisible, and invisible puffs that are in front of you still count as puffs. I don't know how I forgot about this, uh, but they're unable to be attacked unless uh, by an attack or by another puff that allows them to do that attack. So sometimes puffs will hide themselves, but still be available to do their thing. All right, let's talk about some powers and I'll get into my review. Like Invisipuff, which is the flipping a, face, a puff face down, they're now invisible and can't be attacked unless puff-sided or a special attack card is played. 
speaking of puff sight, uh, see the deck of another player of your choice and flip over uh, and also flip all all uh, invisible puffs in their family over. Uh, chaos. Swap decks between two players of your choice. You can swap with another player or draw a new hand from the pile and let the chaos begin. Uh, decks in this hand in this case refer to other players' hands. Uh, ignite is you play after one of your puffs pass away, and of course they will blow up the attacking puff as well. Um, but the pu the puff can be blocked with a defend card. A ghost hunt. The special card reveals and attacks an invisible puff. The puff is no longer invisible. And it's just basically a special attack. It doesn't count as a power, it's actually a special attack that you can use on your turn. Or sneak attack. Steal another player's card at random. The best part is they can't draw a card until your turn is over. Not a bad time to attack. And fortify. One of the most uh, important cards in the game. Fortifies will attach to your puffs. They will protect them. Uh, basically what will happen is in order to defeat these guys, you're going to need to uh, lay down an extra attack in order for it to affect this guy here. So instead of one attack on my dev, now you're going to need two attacks. And four five cards will last until they are destroyed by an attack or by a special power card. And uh, there are certain cards in the game that let you do that. Uh, the last thing is that puffs have special abilities. Like for instance, this guy here lets you steal two puffs when this uh, when when you play a puff nap card. So as opposed to just one, you'll get two with uh, my little Riley here. And Dev here says that sneak attack cards cannot be used on me. It's pretty nice. Uh, this one over here is Queen. Elizapuff, hmm, no one can use a shutdown card on you. And so your puffs are going to have special abilities or they won't. Uh, it's just really based on what puffs you get in the game. And typically speaking, there's no rhyme or reason as to why the puffs are going to have more stars or less or whether a puff is going to have a special ability or not. Okay, battle puffs. So this is a family friendly uh, attack slash battling card game. This is gonna be in the genre of things like exploding kittens or um, I don't know, buffs and bears or whatever the other, the other card game is called. Basically any of those type of like Uno or uh, regular card games that you're gonna see in a sh store shelves. And I would imagine I could see something like this in a store shelf. Uh, you're getting your little puffs, you're taking an attack and powers on your turn and then you're passing. Puffs are going to pass away, puffs are going to come back, and one player is going to be left with puffs at the end of the game, and everybody else's puffs are going to be gone. The first thing I'd like to say is that I would like to see all of the character cards have a unique ability, because I always felt bad when some player would have three characters with three unique abilities, and then another player would have three characters with no abilities, and all of their stars are lower, so they don't even get to go first. Why not just include all the characters to have something unique uh, with them as opposed to just some of them. Uh, the artwork in the game is really cute. That's my favorite part of the game, actually, is the fact that the artwork has all these little cute puffy puff things, and uh, they all look like they're on their, their own little faction, like little, I don't know, cheese puffs, I guess? Uh, they, they work really well for the game. It brings out uh, the family-friendly, kid-friendly element to the game, and uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun to look at. I like to go through, and I went through all the different puffs, and I looked through and read all of them. They all have their own little backstories, and some of them, them are super duper cute. <laughs> Callie even commented on quite a few of those. So the artwork in the game is very good. I really did enjoy this. I think it's going to appeal to certain people and maybe not to others, but in my case, uh, with any kids around, you're going to probably enjoy this game's artwork. Uh, the game itself, well, you're basically going to be choosing puffs and attacking with bad puffs. It's kind of a back and forth action where I'm like, attack, defend, attack, defend. So there's going to be those moments where there's going to be a little bit of tension, a little bit of excitement. Uh, random things can happen. Cards can be played like, oh, I play like a chaos warp or a time zap or whatever and all these different types of actions that are going to affect the gameplay in some unique way. It's a little bit random. It's a little bit crazy and zany, but in reality, I think that's what this game was going for. It looks like a crazy, zany little kid's card game and if that's what they were going for, they did an excellent job of that. I cannot imagine a lot of my hardcore gamer friends jumping onto Battle Puffs, but I can imagine a lot of my gamer friends' kids doing so, and my gamer friends being forced to play with their kids this game, which is perfect for the exact audience I would imagine that they are going for. Uh, I like the special attacks and how they can be reserved for different types of puffs, but it's really rare you're going to see that happen. Um, the defense cards and the certain special attacks that you attack, the invisible puffs and whatnot, are a lot of fun. Fortifying is pretty cool, uh, but can be pretty challenging to defeat. 
and all the different power-up cards I had a lot, a lot of fun playing with. I didn't notice anything that makes you lose a turn in this game, which is nice because most of the games I play that are in this genre make players lose turns, and that's never fun, so I'm glad I didn't see that in this specific game mode here. And in fact, I also like the fact that it does play up to five players, and there are different little battle modes to the game. It's really short, and it plays up to maybe like, I'd say 25 minutes, even with four players. Um, it can even run quicker, maybe a little longer, but overall it's a pretty quick, pretty straightforward shot. If you want to get a game that's family oriented, that's going to have some cute artwork and work well with kids, then this game is definitely one I would suggest taking a look at. It's very straightforward, very silly, and very zany, and quite a lot of chance. Uh, there's not a whole lot of negative I can say about it, other than that's basically how the game plays. Back, 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 back until eventually somebody loses all their stuff. Uh, if you like Battle Puffs, it's something you want to take a look at, though. There's a link down below in the description for you. For me, a solid family-friendly kid game. Thank you for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Battle Puffs the Battle Pack Edition. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button if you would like. Go to unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more reviews other than reviews just here on my channel. You can see reviews by different games from different authors on there as well. You can also go ahead and check out our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games just like this one. Literally just like this one. We'll probably be playing this one here in the next... Uh, coming week, I believe, uh, where you get to see us battle puffs against each other. And if it's something you want to pick up, you'll have the opportunity. So you can see what it's like to play a game uh, in, li in, in the live. So it's kind of gives you an idea of whether it's something you'd like or not. I think it's even better than a review, in my opinion. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to battling puffs with you next time. Get him, little puff guy. So cute. Sharky.